Hello, hello. I'm so happy to have everybody back. As Chanel said, my name is Elizabeth and I am going to be teaching you Apple Mosaics today. And so you can see here, I'm going to show you the project we're going to be making. We're going to choose you're gonna choose either the green apple or the red apple. And I'm going to have some challenges for my bigger kids. And you can find us on Instagram on Learn With Michaels, and you can find me at La Cozy Casita. And Chanel is gonna put all of this information in the Q&A for you. And this is a pretty basic class, but we're going to learn a lot of basic things in this class. Okay. So we're going to be drawing an apple, coloring an apple, and then we will be cutting foam to add to our mosaic. And then for my older kids, you will have the opportunity to paint your mosaic, various shades, and you'll have an opportunity to make a little barrel if you want with a little sign. So let's get to the supply list. We have a lot of supplies for this class, but again, most of them are pretty basic. So what you are going to start out with, move this back away. you are going to need two, one or two pieces of white paper. And I am using either a construction paper or cardstock. I'm using the paper pad from Creatology. This is the one that I have. It's a pretty thick paper. So it's going to be able to withstand the glue that we're putting on our mosaic, okay? Because it'll get a little bit heavy. So if you have something, if you don't have white paper, you can use any kind of construction paper that you like. I just chose to use white. Okay, after that, you are going to need, if you choose to do the sign and the barrel, you'll need brown paper, brown construction paper, or you can just color it brown if you like. <clears throat> okay. Now, if you have your Creatology craft case, most of the items will be in here. But if you do not have the Creatology craft case, I'm going to show you what we're going to need. You are going to need your scissors and you will need the foam, here's our foam, and I'm gonna take out just two red, and I'll take out a green for now. If I make a green, I only have one sheet, so I might make a smaller apple. You'll need that. If you have glue, you can use the glue from the Creatology case your craft case, or you can use regular, this is what I use almost in every single class. This is the glitter and sequin glue. But if you just have regular white school glue, you can use that as well. And then I need a popsicle stick. That's gonna be for my sign. I think that's everything in the craft case. I'm gonna just set these here so you can just begin to see the things that we need. We need a pencil. This is a lid. So you're going to need a larger lid as a template for your apples. Okay. So you can find if there's something like if you're down in the kitchen, maybe a pot or a bowl, something like that, a lid, like a takeout lid. And, you know, it can be a small like you can use a plastic cup, the outside of a plastic cup. It can be as small or large as you like. Just make sure that it'll fit on your paper, okay? You're also going to need a cup with water and you just need a little water. Sometimes people will fill it all the way up and then that's just prone to make a mess. So you just need a little water. This is just to clean off our paint brush and a paper towel. This is if you decide to paint, you don't have to paint, but if you decide, you can do that. This is the uh, paint pots that I am using. Use these. If you have less colors, that's fine too. Again, you don't have to do, you don't have to paint them. 
oops, let me keep it in the frame here. And then I have markers. You can use markers or crayons. Okay. And then I also had baby wipes on the list. And that's just because I'm not near a sink. And so it's just easier for me to use baby wipes. Okay. I think we got it all. <clears throat> so hopefully you came with everything that you needed. Um, and if you have everything, go ahead and write in the QA, Q and A, you know how I always like to know how old or what grade you're starting, what grade you're starting and tell me uh, what state you're in. How about that? While we're waiting for everybody to grab their supplies, we'll just give a, give about a minute. This is apple season over here. So I am um, in Charlotte, North Carolina. So that's where I am. And I'm usually a kindergarten teacher. And this year I'm teaching kindergarten and first grade. So that'll be something new for me. I love teaching kids. I love teaching crafts. And I hope you can see everything, all of these supplies. There are a lot of supplies here. Okay. All righty. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And remember that if you get behind or if we go too fast for you, just remember that this will be uploaded to YouTube within 24 to 48 hours. So you'll be able to see it there. We, you may not even finish the entire class today, and that is totally okay, because I'm just going to teach you the basics, and then you'll be able to finish later, okay? All right, so we're going to get started. I'm grabbing my white paper and my lid, okay? <clears throat> and my pencil. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make one very light circle. So if you can see, you may, you probably can't see in there, but I can see that I still have my circle line right here. And I just kind of left that on purpose. I just erased it just so you could kind of see what I did here. So you're going to see right now, I'm going to make my circle and it doesn't matter where you put it on your page. But what I will say is that I have my page like a hot dog. If you've taken my classes before, this is how we talk about page orientation, the way that your page should go. So a hot dog is long and skinny. So my page is long. If it's like this, it's tall, like a hamburger. So I have mine to the side like a hot dog. Okay. And I'm going to trace my circle. You can have it right in the middle. You can put it to the side wherever you want. But remember to leave a little room at the top for your leaf and your stem. Okay. So just make sure you're leaving a little space there. This out of the way. Okay. So I'm holding down. And if we have really young kids on, you may not have done this part before, so I'm going to help you. You are going to put your pencil and just very lightly go around the circle. Okay. Go around whatever template you brought. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I can see I just bumped into my water a little bit. I'm just going around the circle here. Okay. And then let's see if anybody had added anything into the Q&A, Chanel, about how old our friends are. Yes. Grace <clears throat> says that she lives in Pennsylvania and she is nine. Welcome. Pennsylvania. I like to hear where our friends are from. Okay. So here's our circle. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the bottom part of my apple. So here kind of towards the middle part, I'm going to kind of make like a little hill or a stretched out lowercase n. 
So I'm just going to kind of come up. I'm going to zoom in so you can see really well what I'm doing. So remember, I'm just going to kind of make this line here, okay? Oop, let me get my cord out of the way. So I'm just going to, and this is kind of how you sketch a little bit. You just kind of very lightly mark on your paper. So I kind of did a like a little hill and then I'm coming back up. I'm just coming back up to meet that. So here's my hill or my little lowercase n that's stretched out and I'm coming back up here until I get the shape that I want. Now, it does not have to be perfect. Do you know why? Because apples are not perfect. All apples are different. So I'm gonna show you one more time. I just kind of made a hump here, little hill. And then I didn't come straight down to the bottom. I kind of just brought it up a little bit and brought that up, okay? And now that I have that, I can erase my outside line from my circle. I'm gonna erase the line, just like that. Okay, now to make the top part, now remember, it's okay if it's not perfect because apples are not perfect. If you look at apples from the grocery store, they're not perfect. They're all different. Now this one, we're gonna make almost like a U. Do you see how that kind of dips down? Whoop, and back up, okay? And again, it doesn't have to look just like mine. If you want just a small little U, you can make a small U. If you want a larger U, you can make a larger U. It's what you want. So I'm gonna, and remember sketching, you're just gonna go really light. You're, I'm hardly touching, just very lightly marking. Okay, I didn't come up to, to touch that outside line yet. Now I'm coming back down, down, and I'm meeting the outside line. So here's my U, and I came, before I touched the outside line, I came back down a little bit. I'm gonna do it up here. Here's my U, and then, just came back down for a minute, just barely. You see that? The next time you eat an apple, you might be able to see how it has two indentions like this. It's from where the apple was growing. So I'm gonna erase that outside line just above that U. All right, good job guys. That to me, that's the hardest part. Okay, now we're going to make a little tiny, like a little smiley face, like a little tiny one. And that's where the stem is going to come out. Whoop, right there. See that? And then I'm going to make my stem bend a little. You can make yours straight up and down. You can make yours come over to this side. I'm gonna make mine just like I did in my picture. So all I have to do is I'm gonna sketch again and I'm just gonna make it leaning a little. So just lean into the left and it's coming down to that happy face. And I'm making it tall enough that I'll have space for my leaf here, okay? And we're sketching, which means we can erase it. It's, it's gonna be light enough that we can erase. Now I'm gonna make a line right next to it to match. It's the exact same line just next to it. How are you guys doing? So it was just a circle and a line up like an N, a long N or like a hill. And I just went whoop, came up, came over here and went whoop and came up and matched that circle. And then here I made a U. I went whoop, match the outside line, whoop, and match the outside line. Then I came down here and I made a happy face, just a barely little happy face, just a little tiny one. It was kind of long, long happy face, just a little smile. 
And then I made a line and I decided to have my stem facing this direction, but you can make yours however you want. And then this one is gonna match it. So I'm just making, it's like a big long 11, isn't it? Or like a ladder or something, that's it. All right, now we're ready for our leaf. Um, before you, or, or while you're doing the leaf, mm -hmm. uh, we had another friend tell us their age and where they're from. Um, I do apologize if I mispronounce this, but we have Kalila from Texas and she is also nine. And Jolene said that she's doing good. Awesome. Welcome, Kalila. I had a Kalila as a student once. Not that Kalila, but a different Kalila. I love your name. And I'm glad you guys are doing well. This is like the, the nines class, I think. Usually we have a five-year-old all the way up to a 12th grader. So this must be the nine-year-old class. Okay, so now we're going to make the leaf. See? So we're going to start. Do you see right here where I'm pointing? It's right where the apple meets the stem. I'm going to point right here so you can see. Right there. The apple meets the stem. That is where I'm going to start my leaf. That's where it's going to grow. Okay. So I'm sketching again and I am going to make a curve. Just a little curve. You know what a leaf looks like. It's not super curvy like a, it's not like a um, N. It's a long, just a long little curve. Kind of like I did my stem, but I'm going the other direction. So I'm coming in like this, almost like a rainbow a little bit. And I'm gonna make it a little shorter. I don't want it quite that long. Okay, now I'm gonna come and I'm gonna go the opposite way. And you can have a skinny leaf, you can have a bigger leaf. This one's turning out to be skinnier. And now I'm gonna stop right here. Now I'm starting to curve in because I need to match my bottom leaf to my top leaf. The bottom part of my leaf to the top part of my leaf, okay? So with the stem, we were just matching the lines. Here we're kind of making like a little bit of a rainbow and then like a little bit of a happy face. Just a little bend. And now I'm gonna stop about right here and I have to match these two sides. So I'm all I'm gonna do is bring this up, just like that. So happy face, stop about here and bring it up. Okay, now we need to make the, the veins of the leaf. So I'm just going to go straight down the middle and I'm not even going to go all the way up, but I'm just drawing a line and I'm making it just barely curving, just barely. You can hardly see it. It's not like a straight, straight line. It's just a little curve. I'll do it again so you can see. Just a little curve. Remember, I'm sketching. It's very light. Okay. And now all I have to do is make some V's. Light V's with a little bit of a curve. Come down, make another V. Come down and make another V. That's it. Those are the veins. Okie dokes. So now we get to color. So if you have crayons, you can color yours with crayon. If you have marker, you can use your markers. If you want to do, I would not do paint on this because if you choose to do paint, you're gonna have a hard time sticking your foam down. So don't, don't do paint. I'm gonna make this guy come out a little bit. This is why we can sketch. Erase anything that you really don't like or you wanna fix. 
And again, don't fret too much because apples are all different. Oh, we forgot to end our stem here. I'm just gonna make a little line there. Okay, so clean it up, clean your erase lines. All right, we're ready to use our markers. So if most of our friends are nine-year-olds, you know what to do. This is what I like to do. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab my, there's my green, there's my green. If you want, you can make your stem brown. I think I will. I didn't have brown in that pack, but I do have another brown crayon or marker. Okay, so I am going to trace my apple with red. Now, because I don't want to color my stem red, I want it to be black or brown. I'm gonna wait on that. So make sure not to come in here and color that red. You're gonna color the outside. So stop before you get to your stem. And the same with the apple. Just remember, or I'm sorry, the leaf, just remember that this is gonna be green, okay? All right, so I am just going to start by tracing. Now remember we sketched. So I kind of have my marker on an angle a little bit. See that? It's not straight up and down. If you want your straight up and down, that's okay. Your line is just going to be thinner if you choose that. And that's okay. All the way around. Now, remember, if you didn't fully erase your line, just remember that we went up here. So I'm going to turn a little bit. I like to turn the paper because it's a little awkward to keep that angle. And color at the same time. So I like to turn my or and move your arm around. And if you go out of the lines a little bit, see, I did right there. It's no big deal. And then come on over here. Sometimes you could even, I like working with marker and crayon. You could kind of outline with marker and then color it in with crayon if you want. Okay, this part. Remember, watch out for your stem here. So I'm just taking the top part of my marker now because that's your tip. It's thinner. And I'm just kind of making a line down. I'm just kind of tracing my stem here. And then I'm going to come in here just gently around there, around that stem. All right. So now it's going to be easier to color in. And I just kind of like going like this, back and forth. It's kind of like washing the windows. Some people like to color in one, in different directions. I like to kind of color in the same direction. You can make shorter strokes, you can make longer strokes, but if you're coloring in the same direction, it kind of helps. I always tell my kindergartners, short strokes, same direction because then you won't have as many gaps to fill. If you're a nine-year-old taking this class, you have colored a day or two in your lives for sure. I feel like that's the prime age for coloring because you're getting really good at coloring in the lines. See this one I'm gonna make into three sections here. So you could see once you go over it, it gets darker. So if you just stop right before you get in your space, and that's okay if, if it's a little darker, because there's no way to like do, I mean, you could, but you'd have to be really careful to just one stroke, that'd be hard. So you're gonna have a line and that's okay. And remember, it's gonna get covered with the, with the uh, foam. Okay. I'm just going to color a little quicker because I want to make sure that we get to the mosaic. Again, this does not have to be perfect because it's going to be covered anyway. But the reason why we're doing it is because you see there's spaces here. So you want that space to be filled in with red. That's the only reason. 
what I was going to say, if I have new friends, like kindergartners, they're not used to using markers. I don't think I have any kindergartners on today. And then when I get to the end here, I'm really careful. But if you go out of the line on accident, sometimes that happens. Like if you're coloring and you look up at me or something and you're like, whoa, got a little out of hand there. You can always cut this out when you're done too and paste it on something else and that would look cool. Or you can make your border a little bigger and that would be fine. So here I am just taking the tip of my marker and just filling in those last spots. Okay, so you remember our little teeny tiny smiley face? I'm just gonna go over with red again. Because remember I said, if you go over, it gets darker. See how that got darker? Okay. And then I'm gonna make my light lighter in here. Okay, so now we are going to color our leaf. And the reason I'm doing my leaf next is because I don't want to, I don't want my green tip to turn brown from touching the brown stem. That's the only reason I'm going with my lighter color first. I want it to stay nice because if you use a, a light color against a dark color, it's going to take on that dark color. I'm making my veins. And now I'm going to color it in, all in. This would look cool again if you just came in with a light um, crayon. That would look really pretty. Okay, I want to I want my veins to look darker again. So I'm going to go back over it. There we go. There's my leaf. I'm going to go on the outside as well. This is just very, very basic drawing. And now my stem. Here's my, remember I called these like 11? It's like an 11. So I'm just tracing over this again. And then color it in. Again, this would be cool with a brown crayon if you filled it in. There we go. Okay. Now we're ready to move on. If you're not done, you just keep on going because the because what I'm going to do next, it's going to take a little longer anyway, so you'll have plenty of time to catch up. Okay, I'm going to put my markers away so I can keep my space nice and organized. Don't need this guy anymore. All right. And if you chose green, I really like the green. But do you see how my stems are different? Like this one's much thinner. And then on this one, I even made a little stem coming off for the, the leaf. So every one is different. It can be however you want to do it. Okay, let's get our foam. So mosaics are little shapes put together to fill in a different shape. So you can see this, you'll start seeing this everywhere if you haven't noticed before. I wonder if you have done mosaics before. But I like doing apple mosaics because it reminds me of teaching kindergarten. We always do an apple mosaic at the beginning of the school year. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We are just going to take our scissors and we're going to cut different shapes, okay? So I'm going to keep my shapes like kind of like triangles, squares. I'm not making them rounded. You could if you wanted, but for this, I'm just making them um, kind of like angular. So I'm just trimming. Now, the bigger you go, the quicker your, your um, mosaic will fill in. The smaller the pieces, like this guy, or even this guy, the longer it'll take, but the more beautiful it will look with smaller pieces, because it'll just be more detailed. Or you can just have a mix. So if you can see, I'm just, this one I'm going to cut in half. I'm just cutting some shapes just to get myself started. Whoa, that's a big long one. So I'm gonna cut this into thirds. 
So I've got triangles, trapezoids, rectangles, diamonds. I've got big shapes, small shapes. But like I said, you wouldn't want like, unless you're, you know, if you want, you could, but I'm gonna show you something. See, you could put your mosaics like this, but it's not as fun if you're making big shapes like that. It's still cool, but when you're using smaller shapes, it looks a little more detailed. Plus you can fit in around your apple and that looks really nice. So I'm gonna stop here with what I have and I'm just gonna start gluing, okay? We're gonna fit our shapes in. Let's do this one. I love this lime green, the Granny Smith apple. Okay, if you have this kind of glue, there's always a little dried piece at the top that I peel off. And then I'm going to get it started on my paper towel, just to make sure it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm just gonna glue a little bit on my apple. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna start putting my pieces on. And once I stick it on there, I'm just gonna kind of keep it in that space. And you're kind of just matching, like that kind of looks like a good match there. And then I'll just put a tiny little triangle in that empty space. So you can either glue on your apple or glue on your foam. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Goodness, choked on nothing. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm gonna use smaller pieces up here to kind of fit that in. So I'm using medium pieces right now. I like to use a little bit of a mixture. And you're just kind of, so if it comes out of the line here, just scooch it in. And they don't have to be touching perfectly, but you'll see how they start kind of fitting together in their own way. It's like a puzzle, but it's your own puzzle because you can put it together however you want. I'm just adding a tiny bit of glue. <clears throat> Turn it around. So really there's no, you can add your glue here or on your foam. You just decide what works best for you. Put that in there. I was watching a cooking show yesterday and I have these classes planned weeks ahead. So I had this planned about, I think seven weeks ago, but it was fun because I was watching a cooking show last night and there was somebody who was on there making a mosaic pie. So they had like a custard pie and on the top, you know how we're putting the foam here? They were using things like kiwi and mango, like little slivers. And it was so, and dragon fruit it was beautiful. Wouldn't that be a fun pie to eat? Whoops. See, I kind of slid that, but that's okay. This glue will dry clear. How, how's it coming guys? Is it coming along? So all I'm doing is filling in these little, it's kind of fun. I like a mosaic. <clears throat> I want to do some smaller pieces. I don't want to get it too big. Ooh, this is a fun shape right here. Where is he going to fit? I'm going to put him right there.
Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry. Grace think, says um, things are going good for her. Good. And then Eliza, who we thought was Jolene, her name's actually Eliza. She said that she just turned nine and that she thinks apples are good. <gasps> See, Eliza, it's a nine-year-old party. <laughs> Do we have anybody else who's not nine in this class? It's like the nine-year-old class today. That is so funny. I'm glad you guys are doing well. I love apples. What is your favorite apple? Have you guys ever tried piñata apples? They are so sweet. I think they call them piñata apples because they're they're like candy on the inside. They're so sweet. Delicious. I like a crispy apple though, like a Granny Smith. Crispy and sour. I really like those for candy apples, like dipping them. Caramel apples, I should say, not candy apples. Candy apples have the hard uh, exterior, almost like a sucker. <clears throat> See how I did that? Like it, it wasn't quite fitting how I intended it to. So all I did was just turn it a little bit. And if you get glue on the outside, it's totally fine. So now I have a piece here that I want to fill in. Okay, and I can see that none of the pieces I pre-cut are going to fit in that space. But I know that if I probably cut this in half, that'll work. Either one of these are going to work and it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the cool thing about the mosaic that they just kind of somehow all work. Look at that. Isn't that funny? Now you saw, I did not trace that. I did not, I just snipped it and it kind of made it look like it worked. And I've got another little teeny tiny one to put in there. So I'm gonna cut this one even smaller. Boop. So here in the Carolinas, apple picking season comes in September. So I bet in Pennsylvania, Oop, that's still too big. I bet in Pennsylvania it comes later. That's just a baby one that goes in there. I thought it was going to be bigger. Get in there, little guy. There he goes. Cute. I like the little tinies. This one I'm going to make go this way. Isn't this fun? It's like a puzzle you made for yourself. And then when you're done, it's gonna look super, super cool. Okay, so I always have my daughter <clears throat> make some jokes for me. She finds some jokes and it just depends on whatever theme we're working on. And so I like to do those jokes, ask you those jokes. So here's the first one. Why did the apple cry? So you guys can write in the Q&A if you think you have an answer. Why did the apple cry? My last class, you guys were on top of that. People were figuring out the jokes. I was so impressed. I'm not a good joke figure out her. And then of course, when you hear the answer, you're like, oh, of course. So I'm going to cut some more here. Grace says, because he was about to be eaten. <laughs> that's a good one grace i'd cry too if i was about ready to get eaten here's the answer his peelings were hurt get it instead of feelings his peelings were hurt because apples have peels <laughs> that was a good one though you guys come up with good answers. I'm like, oh, that was clever. I would have never thought of that. <clears throat> so 
So do you see kind of how we, why we needed to use the heavier duty paper? Because when paper gets wet, it kind of folds up and it was getting wet with um, the marker and then it was getting wet now with the glue. You don't need too much. See how that, that got really close to the edge. So I don't like how close to the edge that is. I'm going to just move him up just like that. And it doesn't have to come right to the edge either because you still want to see like this one came out and I didn't even realize it. So let me move him over. You don't want it to come out of outside the edge because what will happen is then you lose the shape that you were originally making with your apple. Okay, so, and then here's another way that you can kind of make it, so you can kind of just do it like a smaller, bigger and smaller space there. You just kind of fill it in. I wouldn't do too big of a glue space or glue, um, put too much glue down because you don't want it to dry up on you before you get a chance to put your foam. But if you don't want to glue every single foam piece, you can do that if you want to. See how that just, we're rocking and rolling now. See how I told you, you could catch up easily if you were still coloring. Because <clears throat> it's the same thing. So I wonder who is, who still has, a, who has, is back to school. I wonder if we have any friends on here who just started school this week. I'm guessing no, because when school starts, you are tired those first couple of days. So I'm just curious if you've started school, let us know in the Q&A. If you haven't started school yet, let us know how many days you have before you start school. If you know, we start next Monday, but the teachers have already gone back. So I was at school today getting ready. But I think um, I think our friends who have started school, I think that's why we have a smaller group tonight because a lot of people are starting back to school already. But once you get into your groove, you'll come back and join us. We have some cute projects coming along. Today I went to Michael's and I bought some really really cute trick-or-treating charms they're so adorable I can't wait to show you I'm not ready to show you today but in my other classes I'll show you they're so adorable and remember I said you can sign up usually about five to seven weeks ahead of time so if you go into the Michaels app which is probably how you signed up for this class or you went online you'll be able to see the kids classes and you'll be able to see the classes that I teach I think right now I have five classes up and you can see what what I've been up to there but we have a canvas painting class coming up we have some more pony beads. I don't know if any of you have taken my pony bead classes. Those are fun. Like little backpack pulls. We're making a jack-o'-lantern and a happy face. Ooh, I hope I love it when you guys send me your pictures when your parents show me or your adult sends me your pictures because I love to see what you ended up doing. I want to know if you did a green apple or a red apple. And did you make a big apple or a tiny apple? If you did a tiny one, you probably on your second apple by now. People make mosaics with glass. Can you imagine how beautiful that would be? Or if you've ever heard of stained glass windows, a lot of the older houses, like maybe in Pennsylvania even, they might have them. 
but um, like in Milwaukee, when I used to live in Milwaukee, they had stained glass windows in a lot of the houses that were so beautiful. And a lot of churches have them. And then when the sun comes through, it's so pretty. People will use old plates, like they get at um, a thrift store. Adults, of course, because you then have to cut them, break them. And that would be very sharp for a kid to do, but adults. So adults will do that, but I think it's kind of fun because like this is the kid version of a mosaic. This is the kid-friendly, no-cut version. <laughs> I'm almost done. See, I get, I just get into these classes. I don't even know. Chanel, what time did we start this class? Um, Five o'clock. Oh, my goodness. See, time just flies when you're having fun. Wow. Who knew? Really, this is anytime I teach these classes, these are like the quickest hour of my whole entire life. Is time flying for you all? This is crazy. Well, that'll give me just enough time to show you how to make the barrel. Oh, here I've got a little skinny mini I'm going to put right here. <clears throat> so you don't have, oh, and I got to teach you. I forgot I got to teach you the paint. So I'm just going to leave this here so I can, you know, this is just two pieces that I would put there. So I'm just going to leave that because I want to make sure that I can teach you how to do the paint. Okay. Time flies. Tell you what. Okay. So if you are not ready for paint, don't worry. You can just watch. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I got a little... I have a little mat, a craft mat. You can get these at Michael's. I don't use them too much because there's glare with them, but I'm going to use them just so you can see me mix my um, paints. Is that too much glare? No, we're good. Okay, so I've got red. Move up a little. So I'm doing different shades of red, okay? If you did green, you can do different shades of green. And... I'm going to do pop this guy open and I'm going to pop my cream open or you can pop your white open. Let me do white. Mm, I'm going to do cream. Okay. And I've got like a little mixing. So I'm going to put red in my dish here. Okay. So I'm just scooping it out with my brush. And again, if you're not here yet, don't worry. Don't worry, because you can kind of watch and see what I'm doing here at the same time as, I'm, as you're working on your mosaics. Okay, so I've got red. And I'm just going to paint some of my mosaics red. Okay, I'm just going to go over it. And it's just enough. It's just enough to show a little bit of detail. Again, this is, you don't have to do this. I'm gonna show you something here. It just kind of adds just a little detail and you can barely see it. I'm just gonna go over it. And you, if you want them darker, you'll go over it a couple of times. If you want it lighter, once is fine. So I'm just picking some random, just around my apple to do the darker red. And then what you'll see is that I'm going to then add a little bit of white and do a few of those with a little white and into my paint mixed in. Because when I add white, it's gonna make the shade lighter. And then I'm gonna add a little more white and cut, paint a few more. And I'm just using the top of my paintbrush, like the tippy toes of my paintbrush. I'm not smashing it down. It's just, it's like how we 
tra how we were sketching. Remember how we were sketching? And I was saying, push down pretty light, push down lightly. So on this, you can see I'm painting each mosaic. I'm not painting a big section. I'm just choosing one of the shapes and I'm painting the shape. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna do itty bitty in here. Remember that itty bitty one that I love so much? I'm gonna do him. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna grab a second brush or you can use a toothpick. And I'm just going to add in, here I'm just putting it to the side here because I'm gonna mix my white and I'm gonna close my paint. Always close your paint because you, A, you don't want it to spill, but also you do not want it to dry out. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of white and mix it in over here. I'm not mixing all of it, just a little area that I wanna use. Do you see how I'm doing that? Just a little tiny area here. Mix it in. Ooh, it's kind of pretty swirly like that. I might leave it. And then I'm just gonna paint. So that's the actual shade of the foam. So I'm gonna add more white because I want it to be a little lighter. I want you to be able to see a difference. And then some over here. It doesn't matter what shade you do. You can do super light, super dark. It's just fun to make it different or just leave it as it was. It's however you want to make it. You know what I say, you're the boss of your own craft. This is your craft. So you get to make it however you want. And if you think, ooh, I like, I want it to be a little darker on that side, you can make it darker. If you're really super experienced and you understand lighting and how when a light hits something, it's it becomes more white. And then as the shadow hits it, it becomes dark. You could do that. You can pretend like your light source is here. So all of these are going to be light. And then over here, it's going to be darker. Up to you. You know how people will kind of draw like a little window on an apple? <laughs> Have you seen that before? That's the light source. So if you look carefully at paintings, or even if you just look at anything where there's a light around, you'll see where the light source is. It's really shiny. Like right here, it's really shiny. From where I'm looking, it's different for everyone. But you'll start noticing. And that's how people are able to draw things with what's called dimension. And if you guys are, if you're older, you might understand that light dimension and light source. But if you're younger, this might be the first time that you're hearing about it. Or, you know, the art teacher at our school, she, she works on um, like light sources with our, even our kindergartners kind of start to learn that. So I'm going to make it white up here because I kind of want the light to hit it right there. Remember how I told you that kind of window? but you don't have to do that at all. You can just make it funsies and any shape that you want. That's it. Okay, <clears throat> once this dries, oops, I didn't get that glued down all the way. That's the one I, I'll have to glue him down later. Once this dries, if you want, now again, make sure that it's dry. So maybe tomorrow, let it sit overnight. You can set like a book or something on top and it'll flatten out for you. So that it, you don't have a wavy paper. Okay, let me stop there so I can show you the barrel. So it's almost time to stop. If you wanted to make a barrel, you don't have to, but if you wanted to, all I did was I painted Oops, I need this guy. This is the one I'm working with. I painted, I just cut out a triangle. A triangle, oh my word. I don't know my shapes. I just cut out a little um, rectangle. So you can just either draw it or just cut it out however you want. It can be, it doesn't have to be a certain, any certain inches or anything like that. Just a little 
sign because usually signs at orchards are like all kinds of wonky anyway aren't they have you ever noticed that at an apple orchard or a farm and then you can draw in here I used paint on this one you can use marker if you want Lena's that's my daughter's name Lena this one I'm gonna do marker S Lena's orchard I like to use Lena's name because it's nice and short and mine is really long. My name's Elizabeth. So we have an Eliza. Eliza, is your name Eliza or Elizabeth? I like the name Eliza. Um, it actually might be Elijah. He did come back and oh. say he's a boy. So Oh, Elijah. I love that name too. So Elijah's Orchard. Cool. Okay, so now we are going to put this, you're going to glue or tape it onto your popsicle stick. So on this one, because I didn't want it sticking out like super far out of my barrel or coming out of the bottom, I just snapped it in half like this. Boop. And then I just taped it on the back. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Because it gives, it just gives it a little more dimension to this picture. You don't have to. And then for my barrel, it's super easy. Again, you don't have to do it, just if you want. Just cut a rectangle. And if you want yours more rounded, you can make, I'll make this one round. The other one I kind of made square. See, but this one you can make round and you can either glue or tape. I'm gonna show you this one. I glue, did I glue or tape this one? Oh, I taped it because taping, you don't have to wait. If you're tape, if you use tape, you don't have to wait for it to dry. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to, so I've got my paper and I'm just going to tape it this way, okay? So then what I'm gonna do now is round it so it looks like a barrel. Now, if you are going to place a book on this when it's dry, then I would not make my barrel yet because what's going to happen to your barrel? It's going to flatten out, right? So this is something you can always do tomorrow. And like I said, it'll be on YouTube as well. So you're rounding this and then you're going to come in here and either tape it in there or what you could do is just put your tape backwards so my sticky part is up this time, okay? This part's sticky instead of being face down because what I'm gonna do is go, whoa, turn it all the way around and then put my finger through. So now I have a little barrel. Push it down just a little. And now my, or my little orchard could go in there. And then you can just kind of make little lines if you want. And you could do this before you tape it down and that'll be easy. Or you can just go like this and that's fine too. Okay. And then you just pop this little guy in there. So I thought it would be cute even to put grass if you wanted, you could do any of that. You could put sky if you want. I just left it plain. So there we have it. And right on the dot. How do you like me now, Chanel? <laughs> right on the dot. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up. I want to say goodbye to you guys. Um, don't forget, you can see, you can find me on Instagram at La Cozy Casita or Michaels at Learn With Michaels. Chanel put all of the information in the Q&A so you can see that. 
show me your pictures when you're done. I would love to see your final product. I know many of you are probably still working. And like I said, that is totally okay. I love working with you guys. You're so much fun. I love that you're being creative and you're using the, your creative side of your brain. It's so fun. So I hope you'll join me for my next class, which is coming up and just check the website, check all that. But this is coming up soon. So we'll be making these guys. Aren't those fun? Little backpack pulls, a jack-o'-lantern. I don't know if that's the one right next. You'll just have to check the apps there or the Michael's app. All right, you guys, I hope you have a great night and I will see you the next time. Bye.